Welcome to The Author Show, where we present new authors and books. From fiction to self-help and everything in between, you'll find it all here. To watch the TV version of our program, visit AuthorsWebTV.com. That's AuthorsWebTV.com. And now, let the show begin. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Don McCauley. Today we're welcoming the program author Wayne Clark, and Wayne is the author of He and She. Author Wayne Clark was born in 1946 in Ontario, but has called Montreal home since 1968. Woven through that time frame in no particular order have been interludes in Halifax, Toronto, Vancouver, Germany, Holland, and Mexico. By far the biggest slice in the pie chart of his career would be labeled journalism, including newspapers and magazines as a reporter, editor, and freelance writer. The other smaller slices of the pie would also represent words in one form or another in advertising as a copywriter and as a freelance translator. However, in the pie chart would also be slivers and shreds of time stolen over the years to write fiction. Wayne, how are you? I am very well, Don. Thank you. Well, let's start with the big question. Tell us about this book, please. Okay, first of all, it's a contemporary literary fiction novel. It's set in two cities, New York and Montreal. It's about a middle-aged man mired in midlife crisis. He has a long-standing relationship with a woman, but it's become so on and off, he doesn't know whether it would be even honest to say he still had a girlfriend. His libido has seemingly vanished. Is that because of her or him? He's a heavy drinker. Through the fog, he has come to realize he no longer desires anything in life. Uh, nothing matters, be it women or career. Nothing in life tastes good anymore, to put it simply. Like many of us, he has vague memories of being a boy and thinking how exciting life would be and how eager he was to become an adult. Now he looks around himself and sees little. More important, he looks down the road to the future and sees nothing. He wonders whether, in the end, this is all there is to life. Were those childhood dreams just some kind of a big hoax? The thought of passing the remaining years without friends, without desire, nothing except the highs and lows of drinking, that causes him to panic. Then from some perhaps recess of itself, perhaps just wordless instinct, a desire suddenly emerges to find out once and for all, no matter what the cost. What opens the door to that instinctual desire to live is an image he sees by chance on the internet one night as he sits, as he often does, drinking the evening away and aimlessly browsing. It's an image of a beautiful young woman. He stares at it, transfixed. Only later does he look further down the page and discover she is a dominatrix. Though he never before even thought of seeing a dominatrix, something inside tells him he must meet this woman. The morning after, sort of sober, he looks at his laptop screen again and feels the same way. He now has a purpose in his life, he thinks. It's finding this woman. And that's basically the story. It's that search, that obsession, that need. So who did you write your book for specifically? I have to admit that I wrote it entirely for myself. In fiction, I don't think you can really write a book for anyone. You just want to tell a story and let the pieces fall where they may. In my case with He and She, the story was not plotted out in advance in any great detail. It grew as I wrote. And because it did, each day's writing was very much a discovery, one that I found increasingly exciting as the book progressed. Because the story was not all thought out in advance, I never considered who particularly might want to read it until after it was completed. It's literary fiction, not genre fiction, so I could never tell myself this book is for mystery lovers or fans of spy stories. While writing the book, I knew the story was about dying dreams, loneliness and fading sexuality, all the things that be come issues with aging. But in no time during the writing did I say to myself that I was writing the book for people struggling with aging. I was just telling a story. There are young characters in the book as well, facing their own issues. Now, could you say there's any type of central message or perhaps underlying theme that you could say runs throughout the book? Yes, I can, Don. It would be simply live your life. Don't just dream it, which is what my main character did. And above all, don't put your sexuality on a shelf. It's, of course, an integral part of who we are, and our sexual natures are far more intricate than we tend to think. 
I don't think men look at their sexuality as much as women do. It's certainly not a part of us that should be ignored or left explored. Now, if you had to choose, what would you say is the single most important idea you're sharing in your book that's really going to add value to the reader's life? I think what a reader will get out of it is that as you grow older, it's important to make sure you cherish your friends, your relationships. Changing circumstances in life, you know, ones we have no control over, they take some of those away from us. So we have to work on preserving the ones that remain. Don't be afraid of love. Go after it, as my protagonist did. But unlike him, don't delude yourself into thinking one person can put everything right in your life. We need people in our lives, and uh, I mean, that's our nature. And far too many people end up utterly alone these days or in relationships that feel like being alone. It's a horrid situation to be in. All readers would agree that loneliness makes life meaningless. We need to have people to care about. Now, if you could compare your book with any book out there we might already be familiar with, which book would it be and why? There's a book I read about just yesterday, in fact, in an NPR review. It's called Summer Long. That's one word, Summer Long, by Dean Bacopoulos. I, of course, haven't had time to read it yet, but it takes on midlife crisis head on, as my book does. Though the issues such as midlife crisis are raised in he and she are not unique, I think the story is in a way, so it's hard to compare to many other books. In reference to my main character, a reviewer described it as a second coming of age story, one that begins in middle age. Perhaps there are other novels that embrace that idea, but I've not come across them. So to answer your question, Don, I can't directly compare He and She to other books out there, but I will say that prior to writing He and She, I was touched by the way Philip Roth wrote about male aging and some related issues in The Dying Animal, where he basically says that no matter what you think, you're not superior to sex. I also loved his The Humbling in which a once famous stage actor's life disintegrates with time and he finds himself alone with nothing much other than fast-fading memories. That is until uh, a young woman enters his life. Now, some people have called your work erotica. How would you respond to that? My first reaction is that my novel is not erotica. It's certainly not anything like Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, it's not written to arouse, which I think is or was the definition of erotica. However, I'm quite happy to get a thoughtful review that happens to call it erotica. If I may quote a sentence or two from a review I liked from Red River, I believe, quote, Clark uses the narrative to explore how diverse and intricate sexuality can be. The BDSM scenes are raw and realistic without being too much for newcomers who haven't read erotic books like this before. As I say, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Literature, I think, is going through a stage where genre lines are blurring and readers are responding. For example, a mystery can be just as much a paranormal novel as a mystery. Who knows, perhaps there's a romance zombie crossover book out there somewhere. But that said, while I don't consider my book to be erotica, it is indeed about sexuality, about learning to navigate a river of urges that might once have been submerged. As indicated by the flogger on my book's cover, my protagonist's quest ends up in a BDSM dungeon. For those who might not know what BDSM stands for, it's a, an overlapping abbreviation of bondage and discipline. There's your BD, dominance and submission. There's your DS, sadism and masochism. That's your SM. Once my main character finally meets the dominatrix, a no sex act takes place between them. However, I can see how people interested in BDSM could find my description of the BDSM sessions arousing. In the end, though, the book is not about BDSM. It's about one man's attempt to taste life again before it's too late. So what has been your most rewarding experience since publishing your work? Besides holding the actual paperback in my hands, which I think every author loves and never gets tired of, the most rewarding experience was first hearing I'd been nominated for an International Book Award. I would have been totally happy with that as a reward, the nomination. But a few months later, the announcement came that from among thousands of entries in the contest, my book had actually won a silver medal for general fiction. This was the reader's favorite International Book Awards. I don't know what could top that feeling. I've gotten some personal feedback from readers that rank pretty high on the reward meter. Readers who opened up about their own personal lives after having read my story and how the book either echoed what they had gone through or clarified it in some way. 
that's when having written a book of fiction seems very real. If someone were to write a book about your life, what would the title be? I suppose it might be called, What's He Up To Now? I suggest that because you could say I reinvented myself a number of times. I started as a newspaper man and switched to magazines, sometimes on staff, other times as a freelancer. I once quit journalism itself to experience holding the kind of jobs that were held by the people we wrote about as journalists. I'd always been a journalist and had never held any other kind of job. For example, I worked as a waiter in a rough and tumble bar. That scared the hell out of me. I then worked on a commercial fishing boat that leaked like crazy. I delivered flyers 12 hours a day in the endless West Coast rain, all that sort of thing. Long story short, after a couple of years, I ended up back in journalism for some time before making the jump to the world of advertising, which lasted nearly a decade. Eventually, I returned to a newspaper job before deciding to hang out my shingle as a translator. With the exception of the odd jobs I took on briefly, everything I've done has been about words. I've always written fiction on the side, initially with hopes of publishing, but in later years, just for the pleasure of the process. Yes, writing can be extremely hard and frustrating, but if you persevere, ultimately you will get to the top of the mountain and see how something you've created. I think there's an element of magic in all creativity. How would you describe your writing style? That's a tough one. Because I now consider my writing style to be just me. I have a voice. I recognize it when it's sounding right, when it's sounding honestly me. It took a long time to develop, mind you, but I hear it now. The rhythms are mine somehow. If you'll permit, a review from Indie Reader described it as, uh, the prose is wonderfully conversational, working subtle comprehensive magic to pull the reader forward. I think conversational is an accurate element of my writing style. In your opinion, who should buy this book? Anyone who is at a stage in their life where they strongly feel it's time to re-examine that life. So while that could be anybody, regardless of age, that would certainly include readers facing some form of midlife crisis or anticipating it. But there's a broader message that is important at any age to pursue feelings and ideas no matter if there's a guarantee you'll find them. Even a failed search leaves you in a new place to start your next search from. And based on reader response so far, I'm finding that a lot of young women are identifying with the dominant tricks in the story. Not so much that they necessarily want to do the same thing. I think they identify with the fact that she's a young woman like them, a clearly intelligent one, who is determined to carve out an interesting life. To do that, she didn't hesitate to try the unknown and take an unconventional route. Today's young people, I think, are uh, more open-minded than I was at their age and more willing to explore all the possibilities out there for living a life that reflects who they are. I say bravo, go for it. Well, time is getting very short, so the most important question, where can readers find you and your book? My book is available everywhere at all major online retailers in both paperback and all digital versions. And as for myself, I'm still in, in Montreal. You can contact me through my website, wayne-clark.com. Well, this has been just great. Our guest today has been Wayne Clark, and he is the author of He and She. Wayne, thanks very much for being with us today. You're most welcome. It was my pleasure, Don. This is Don McCauley wrapping up another edition of The Author Show. Please share this interview with your family and your friends so that they, too, may have the opportunity to discover our guest and his work. And why not spread the word on social media? We look forward to you joining us next time for another great book and another great author on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. To contact us, call toll-free 1-877-955-8800. That's 877-55-8800. Or visit theauthorshow.com, theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show. The Author Show.